Hello everyone, we're back with another episode of Wolfsburg Warriors. So much time has passed since you last saw us. We're in March now, it's like three or four months on from when you saw us last, so you know what that means. We've had a transfer window, we've had a youth intake, plenty of games have been played, the competitions have shaped up in a very competitive way, so we've got a lot to go into, and we're playing Porto in the Champions League. There's so much to pack into this episode, so let's run the intro and get right into it. Hi everybody, Jake here. Welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, of course, we're back with Wolfsburg Warriors, the series where we try and win the Champions League with Wolfsburg. And today we have a Champions League knockout round tie against, second leg tie that is, against Porto. So it's a big one, but I can't, I can't waste too much time. We've got plenty to get into so much since you last saw us. And there's reasons why, which I'll explain in a second. But first of all, I have to do the usual thing. If you could smash the like button, it really does help in pushing these videos out to as many people as possible. Make it turn blue. I'd be a very happy man. Comment down below to get involved. I'll try and respond to every comment. Love interacting with you guys, whether it's about the save or what you had for breakfast this morning. Let me know. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, as we try and get that number up as high as possible. Hit the notification bell. Check out the Discord in the description. That's everything. I'll shut up. Let's get on with the episode and start off with the form since you last saw us, which was a fair while ago now. Um, Where was it? The 2-0? Yeah, it was the 2-0 against Roma. Um, I originally then planned to bring it back once we were in a Champions League knockout, so I just didn't realise it would be in March. So a lot of time has passed. I do apologise for that. I was originally going to show the other group games, but then we were so clear in the group, I thought we'd just leave it and just move straight on to the knockouts, keep the series progressing and all that good stuff. That's why there's been probably a one more day delay than I would have wanted because I just had to fill that gap, play all the matches in between in terms of when the video was coming out. So there's the video came out one day too late because of that. That's what I'm trying to say. But yeah, that took too many words to get out of my mouth. I should really take some lessons on how to speak properly. But um, overall, it's been good. We haven't been at the form we've had in that season that we've just had, the second season. We were very good then. We've still been playing well, just not as good, dropping a few more points. And that has left the competitions looking like this with us now trailing in the league to Borussia Dortmund by two points. So that's going to get competitive. We do have to play them still. We've got third place Leipzig to play. We've just played Bayern and beat them. We've got Mainz to play, Leverkusen to play. It's all still up for grabs, but I do think over the consistency period, we will beat Dortmund. Uh, goal difference is close too, so it's very close between the two of us. We got knocked out of the Pokal, but Champions League, we are going into the second leg against Porto with a 3-1 advantage. Two goals from Adiemi, one goal from Sesco in the first leg, and then a late goal from, what was his name? Uh, he, he's got a name, I know his name. Bellotti. Bellotti scored for Porto. He's transferred there and he scored against us, unfortunately, late on. But 3-1, I still feel quite comfortable going into this second leg. We beat Bayern Munich recently, like I said, 2-0. 2-1, should I say. Late goals from Adiemi and Piccoli following Lucas Hernandez sending off was great news for us. So we've made it out of that alive. But before we get into the match, we've got transfer windows and youth intakes to talk about, both of which, um, well, one of them was more exciting than the other. Maybe not what you'd think. The transfer window, I kept my cool. I know what I want in the summer. I know how much we're going to need to get that player or that couple of players I want to just make this team and a fully legendary team instead of the elite team that it already is. So I just picked up a few young players for the squad. None for any particular fee that was anything useful. This guy was absolute rubbish. I don't know why I signed him. We got this guy, Wilson Salazar, who looks like he'll be fine for the dev teams. And same with Thrales. I don't know how to pronounce that. He's got a bit of potential, actually. A Brazilian left back and Cam. Typical Brazil for you, that, isn't it? He can play left back and he can play attacking midfield. And then in terms of outgoings, Gerhardt has left on loan to Frankfurt with an option to join for four million pounds. He's been a great servant to us versatile as anything professional brilliant player but he wasn't playing many games for us in the last couple of seasons so I thought why not let the guy move on let him get some playing time we were going to lose him on a free next summer anyway so may as well sell him and we're not using him so why not let him go <sighs> I need to keep my breath I'm going very quick for all of this but I'm trying to do my best if I'm honest with you I did record the Bayern Munich match before this as well and <laughs> I didn't turn a mic on. Let's not talk about it. That's why this is just a one match episode. So I do apologize, but it's late at night. And I'm trying to get it all done. There was also a screaming fox outside interrupting my recording. So that didn't help either. But I suppose the mic didn't even pick it up. But youth intake, it was bloody brilliant. We got an excellent intake, it says here, but it did actually say golden generation when it came through. So obviously they've realized since then that maybe the players weren't quite golden, but um, there is a real star in there. Callum Hallard, an English five-star potential central midfielder, already a one-and-a-half-star player, can play on that right wing, but I'll be using him as a central midfielder as we do play 
The vertical tiki taka likes to shoot from distance, move the ball to the right foot before dribble attempt apparently. Um, very nice mental attributes with some great determination which is really going to help him. Driven personality. Just going to look behind the camera for what technicals he's got. They're all right. Nothing special actually, but he'll need an improvement there. But he's, he's got some good mentals to build up from. 15 years of age, golden generation for the club, some other nice players coming through. Very happy with that. That's exactly what I wanted. A young English central midfielder coming through. I would have preferred German, uh, I suppose, just because we're trying to build a German core to the squad. But we'll take it. Maybe he'll be a German nationality by the end of it. <sighs> we're doing great. Right, come on. Let's get into this Porto game. It's about my bedtime, guys, to be perfectly honest with you. So I'm trying to get this done as quick as possible, then edit and then put it out the day after. And I've got work that day as well. So <laughs> loads to get into. But let's have a look at the team we're going to use to face off against Porto. I'm going to play Kenneth winning goal because, like usual, rotating win and cast steals for this season. And this is a game that I think we will win. Being at home, Kenneth Wynn can play. Speaking of win, win, Kenneth Wynn, he's going to help us win. I'm going crazy at night time, I think, here. Uh, Baku, Lacra, Gavardio, Luka Nets as our back four. Nico, Cook, Shagler, Kozlowski. Am I happy with that? If Arnold's fit, Arnold's playing. I'm, I'm afraid uh, poor Lewis Cook's missed out there. Actually, we'll do Arnold there, Lewis Cook there. I'm more happy with that. Wait, what have I just done? I, I, I think I know what I'm doing, guys. Yes, this is what I want. This is what I want. There you go. Arnold in that attack midfield role. Sesko and Adiemi. I'm happy with that. Let's get Amin on the bench in case we need an attack midfielder. Let's get right into the match. Without further ado, come on, let's get right into it. But yes, um, 3-1 up after that first leg, which I was very happy with. So it was a good advantage. I just wish it had been 3-0 and then we would have had nothing to worry about, I would have thought. We dominated Porto off the pitch. They played a 4-4-2. We're quite basic with it, to be honest. Never really tried much. It was quite a good individual goal from Belotti that they scored, but we dominated them actually quite physically in the air. I think all the games, all the goals, should I say, and um, particularly, yeah, so it was Sesco winning headers for Adiemi, and then Sesco scored his goal with a header. So we were quite dominant on an aerial front in a physical sense. So hopefully we can keep that up. Speaking of, we've got a set piece here with Arnold Tullacra, but we go all the way back to Baku, who standout player of this series has got to be Baku. He is just amazing. Here is Sesco, though. He's got a chance to play through our midfielders. He does lose out on the ball. And here is Belotti carrying forward for Porto. Plays through Georges. George back to Belotti. Belotti with a long ball forward. Gavardio intercepts and plays it to Nico. On to Arnold. Quick pass through to Sesco. The vertical tiki taka is beautiful, but not. What is not beautiful was that Sesco shot. Left foot, scuffed it over the bar. Not good enough, really, from Benjamin Sesco there. He could have ran the old pitch and scored, but he decided to take the shot on early. Kenneth Wynn now plays a long ball forward, 16 minutes in, and it's looking like we are the dominant team so far, but you never know. All it takes is one goal from Porto, and it is squeaky bum time, and we're getting a bit nervous, but hopefully we never get to that stage. We just need the first goal, and I think we can call this tie a dead tie straight away. Here's Adeyemi to Baku. This could be the one. Perfect cross from Baku on the byline, as usual. To Lewis Cook. Back to Baku. He's going to do it. Back to Lewis Cook. Arnold off a line from Cardoso. Don't know who he is. He wasn't even looking at the ball and he hooked the ball clear. I don't know how he did it. He was facing away and just pulled off this insane little reverse to kill the ball off the line. So fair play to him. Arnold with the ball in. Belotti with a header away. Gavardio is going to sweep up and again will go forward. And it's a set piece that has caused the whole thing once more. So that's good to see that those set pieces, as I mentioned, are working. The ball's gone back to Kenneth Wynn. We obviously trust him now, the young 17-year-old. Not the best pass from him, though. He's not really a sweeper keeper, um, but we do have a sweeper keeper on this tactic. I don't know why. I think it was just there. And I just said, yeah, we'll keep the sweeper keeper. And it's never done me wrong. Um, but maybe Kenneth Wynn isn't fully adapted to that position yet. Here's Baku. It's a good ball from Sesko. Baku should have gone in with his right foot there, but he tried to cut back. I don't know why. But Arnold's won it back. This game is back and forth. I don't know what to do. Sesko's through. Just score Sesko so we can calm down. There we go. <laughs> Benjamin Sesko puts the ball into the back of the net. Some great play from us. Kind of, I suppose. We lost the ball. Won the ball back. Lost the ball. But we eventually did get to play that sneaky pass through to Wurtz at Wurtz, Sesco, and he finished very nicely. It was Lewis Cook with a pass, nice weighted ball. Sesco brought it down, and it is actually a very, very good finish into the far corner against a good keeper in Ruli. So that's a great start for us in this half. I'll happily see no other highlights and just see it out with a 1-0 win and get into the quarterfinals because that is where we got knocked out last year of the Champions League against Barcelona, I believe. And the season before that was the semi-finals of the Champions League. So we can't get knocked out at this stage, thankfully, by the looks of it, with 4-1 up. So we've at least got back to the quarterfinals. I hope we can go further and then even one more than the semi-final. A final this year is what I'm aiming for. 
and hopefully a league title if we can keep up with Dortmund. But I'd happily trade a Champions League for a second place finish in the Bundesliga. That was a close shot there from Porto, hitting the post with a very powerful header. But we get away with it and it looks like we'll go into half time with a 1-0 advantage. I'm happy with that. I'm going to tell the boys that exact thing. I'm happy with it. I think that's what... No, I said something about media. Shows how much interest I take in uh, those team talks. You know, you, you look at them for like the first three games you ever play football manager and then you never look again. Assistant recommended team talk all the way. No idea what's happened there from Porto. They had the ball about three yards from goal when they decided to go back to their centre-back. But I say that. He's, play, he's going to play a brilliant ball in now, isn't he? Vitinha, Medi tries to get to the ball. I think we're going to get a counter-attack. I have faith. Otavio does play George Fruvo. This is a great crossing position. And it's a goal. Medi, Tare... Oh, it's Taremi. Okay, I was trying to figure out who it was for a second then, but that makes more sense. I know Taremi has a name. Porto score. It's 1-1 on the night. I'm fine with that because we're 4-2 up on aggregate. It was good play down the wing. Good crossing. At least five of those Porto players had a open opportunity on goal. No one's fault, really, in terms of... It wasn't an error from the goalkeeper, I'm trying to say. Probably an error on the defence's end for letting so much space for players to run onto. Ball into the box, headed over the bar from Lacroix. Again, another aerial presence from us, causing an issue from Porto. They must be very weak in the air or something. Overall, though, I've just looked XG-wise, Porto giving us a bit of a game. Fair play to them. But I think over the course of the, the legs, we should be fine. Getting a bit nervous. Can't lie, guys. Getting a bit nervous. Otavio's just scored. 4-3 on aggregate, 2-1 to Porto on the night. We don't often lose at home, so I was hoping that would mean that we'd be fine tonight, but it's not quite working out that way so far. Sesco, quite tired, makes me think Piccoli should come on. Nico, I'm going to shore up the midfield with Grealish, because uh, he is very strong at seeing games out, I suppose. And then the mean, never let me down, is going to play in the attacking midfield role instead of Arnold. Maybe I could have moved Arnold back into Shagler's position, but he did look a bit tired, so we'll let him go. Is that... What the hell's gone on there? We've played a ball in and the ball was going nowhere near Adiemi. And I think a Porto player just grabbed Adiemi and went, nope, threw him to the floor. I think we've won a penalty. And this could just ease the tension so much if Adiemi bags this. I don't think he's missed one yet. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, Adiemi. Put us into the quarters. He puts it right into the corner. What, what a man. I'm still, I'm clapping with my fingers crossed. I don't need to cross him anymore. We have scored. That is 5-3. A great penalty. I don't want to see the replay of the penalty. I would like to have seen the replay of uh, how he won it because it looked like the defender just went, get out of my way, Adiemi, pushed him to the floor. Might have even been a punch. Who knows? Yeah, let's say it was a punch. Get the Porto player banned. Get on the referee's back. Get him on our side. Can we make it 3-2 on the night? Shavler saved. Piccoli. Gavardio. Back of the net. 6-3 on aggregate. 3-2 on the night. We keep up winning ways. It's a great goal from Gavardio. Great free kick in. Well brought down by Piccoli. Good choice of option to find Gavardiol in the box. Let's watch it. Shagler, free kick, powerful. Rulli has to save. Piccoli picks it up, pulls it back. Gavardiol, left foot. Eat that. Eat that, Porto. 3-2 up. 6-3 on the night. We're going through. Oh, maybe not. We should be fine. We should be fine. Don't do anything, Porto. Don't get anyone's hopes up. Gavardiol deals with it. I mean, deals with it. Adiemi definitely deals with it. He's won the ball back and we might even get another goal here. Um, speaking of, I mentioned before, I say speaking of, nothing to do with what I'm just talking about. I just saw Luca Nets on the pitch. That made me think about DeMarco, and that made me think about player unhappiness. We've had to deal with Wurtz asking for a new contract, Grillish, Castiles, and DeMarco asking for more playing time. We've managed to sort everything out, really. But I spoke in previous videos about none of these players were unhappy, everyone was happy. That didn't last for long. As soon as we started drawing and losing a game, all the players were, oh, yeah, I'm not getting paid enough. I'm not playing enough. We've sorted it all out now, but yeah, that was an issue for a little bit during the like five months that you haven't seen us. What a ball that is, by the way, to play Adiemi through from Shagler, I think it was. Great finish. We've walked this. Never in doubt, was it, guys? We were never worried. We were never worried. We're into the quarterfinals. I have already checked and the draw isn't for a week or so. I've got to play Leipzig in the meantime, so we won't show that just yet. That'll be the end of today's episode. Time to take the save file out. Take the video file out, edit it, put it out the next day. So <laughs> I've got to get on with it. So thank you all for watching. Like if you did enjoy. You're all amazing. Thank you for all the support. Genuinely, really does mean a lot. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time, guys. Have a great day. Goodbye.